In this video, we will discuss about anatomy of larynx. First, let us draw a trachea. These are the cartilages of trachea. And this is a membrane in between these cartilages. So, we will discuss about the cartilages of larynx first. This is a looks like a ring it's a ring like cartilage and it is called as the cricoid cartilage this is the it looks like a pyramid it's arytenoid cartilage it has three processes anterior lateral and superior process so for understanding this is the anterior direction and this is the posterior direction and on the top of this arytenoid cartilage there is small horn like cartilages called as the corniculate cartilage and there is another cartilage which is suspended within the membrane layers called as the cuneiform cartilage and uh, this is the thyroid cartilage it uh, anteriorly it covers all these layers it is uh, one of the largest and it covers however it is uh, not covered at the back so another cartilage this is uh, epiglottis it is attached to this thyroid cartilage and this is uh, this is a cricothyroid membrane a membrane between the thyroid and cricoid cartilage it is cut during the emergency cricothyroidotomy now let me draw since this thyroid cartilage obstructs the view of what we are going to discuss next let me draw a cut section of this cartilage and this is where this epiglottis is attached it is the posterior wall of the anterior surface of the cartilage you just know that it is attached here next we are going to see about this vocal cords they extend from the anterior process of the arytenoid cartilage to the uh, thyroid cartilage this is the false vocal cords and this is the true vocal cords just know that the true vocal cords are narrower than the false vocal cords and there is a membrane between this true vocal cords and the cricoid cartilage and then membrane between the false and there is above and the free end this one membrane between the true and the cricoid cartilage is conus elasticus and the other one is quadrangular membrane so now let's discuss about the cavities so when food comes this epiglottis bends and the food is directed into the esophagus as the food goes through the sides of the epiglottis for which you can refer the other mechanism of epiglottis this is the inlet and this is outlet the outlet is it is into the trachea that is air flow inlet and outlet now you see all these membranes are covered by a mucous membrane it's nothing like other parts of the inner organs it is also covered by a skin you can see a skin like uh, layer the mucous organ mucous layer so in this cross section if you see so if this is the true vocal cord ligaments it's a covering on either side 
for better understanding let me take this antero posterior cross section so if you cut it in this side and if you see through um you will find that let this be the false false ligament the true ligament which is narrower than the false so this is how this this mucous membrane will be this is will be a slight out pouching in between these two ligaments and that is known as the uh, ventricle of larynx or oil can of larynx other name is sinus of mogagni this is called as an oil can because there are some large number of sebaceous glands present and this is the vestibule of the larynx and if you take a histological cross section here say this is a ligament Mm, this is the mucus layer it's lined by columnar epithelium ciliated so there's reduced number of connective tissue present below this so in case of chronic irritation that is it can be caused due to cigarette smoking or any local infection or or even in the case of mixed edema that is reduced thyroid hormone uh, fluid will be collected within this layer so as a result there will be a swelling of this layer which makes it uh, difficult for the membrane to vibrate and may cause hoarseness of the voice this is because the vocal cords false vocal cords are involved in voice making rather than the true vocal cords thanks for watching for better understanding uh, you could refer uh, netter atlas